All right, gentlemen, I've been over the rules with you both. You're professionals. I expect you to conduct yourself as such. Touch gloves. Good luck. Eddie Hernandez, senior, the referee, as Janabek Alim Khanouli looking to remain undefeated. He's 7-0 with three knockdowns in his career. He's coming off a win in August, a knockout victory against Canadian Stuart McClellan, which was not a fight at all. Janabek dominated from the opening bell, and he will be taking on Albert Onolose from Calgary, Canada, by way of Nigeria, 24-2-1, coming off a knockout win in January against Hanaro Ortiz. That was in the first round of that fight. So it's been about 10 and a half months since Ono Lunose has fought. We will see if any ring rust is an issue. He looks to be in pretty darn good shape coming in against the much taller Alim Kanuli. Absolutely, yeah. And, and Kanuli, you'll see taller, longer, rangy guy, um, also fighting out of that southpaw stance. So he, you're going to be seeing that jab coming from the right side. You're going to see a battle of, of the feet, which you just saw Janna Beck step on uh, on um, on Nunosi's leg. call him Albert. Leg, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, lead foot. So you're always going to see that when you've got an orthodox versus a, a southpaw, where you're going to have a battle of that front foot. And if you're Albert in terms of going up against the southpaw, you want your front foot to be on the outside, correct? Exactly. You want to be moving away from the power hand, which is going to be the left hand of the southpaw, moving to your left side, lining up your straight right hand as your power punch. Not the first time that Ono Lunose has fought for a belt. He actually won the NABO middleweight title back in March of last year against Francis Lafreniere in a majority decision in Canada in a 10-round fight. But definitely the toughest opponent that Ono Lunose has ever fought in his 27 fight career. You can see Ono Lunose is uh, he's a he's a veteran. He knows what he's doing. He's moving to to his left. He's leading with that, that straight right hand. Probably not the first southpaw that he's fought. You mentioned you've watched a lot of John Abek's fights. This is I think the fourth fight I've called of John Abek's and I was talking to him yesterday prior to the weigh-ins through, through a translator and I was asking him has he consciously made an effort to become a more exciting fighter in the ring? Because if you look at his fights since coming to the U.S., he was extremely stiff in those first couple of fights. And then in the last fight, he really smiling, loose, a lot of confidence. And he said, absolutely, he wants to sell tickets. He wants to be marketable. That's something that he understands as part of the game. And so being entertaining inside the ring and showing that he's having fun is part of that. Yeah, he, he has a very interesting style. You know, even though he's a southpaw, he's, and he is slick, he's not so much like a cute southpaw, which is someone who's not gonna be very offensive. Um, you know, John Beck uses that straight, that straight jab. He's a good, really, really good uh, body puncher, which uh, Buddy McGirt told me about several fights ago. Um, and we'll see that. He's very consistent with the body work on both sides. But um, also, he's technically very, very sound as are most fighters who come from the boxing laboratory in Oxnard, California. And a big reason why is they have these long, illustrious amateur careers before they even turn pro. As Ono Lunose acting as a middle linebacker, going in for the sack there to end round number one. Round number two of this schedule 10 between Alim Kanuli and Ono Lunose. Here in Fresno, California, the sun has officially set on a beautiful day at Chukchansi Park, the home of the Fresno Grizzlies, the AAA baseball affiliate of the Washington Nationals. You can always expect, Chris, a great crowd in Fresno. Obviously, we know from seeing countless Jose Ramirez fights that Fresno is really a great fight town. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I, I was jogging around town today, and I ran into several people who were, who were fight fans and, and said they were coming out to the park tonight. 
Um, so it's definitely, definitely a, a good boxing culture here in Fresno. Ramirez is here in attendance, signing autographs and shaking hands, kissing babies as he usually does as when he's back in Fresno. He will be fighting, as it was announced just earlier this week, he'll be fighting his next fight early next year in China against his mandatory opponent, Victor Postal. That will be in, I'm not exactly sure what the area is called, but they call it the Hawaii of China, a resort town. And from what I've seen from pictures, a lot of beautiful scenery and golf courses, and I'm jealous not going over there. Hey, Hawaii of anywhere, I want to go. I'm down. I'm down. Lim Khanouli from Kazakhstan has a wife and three children still back in Kazakhstan and he's talked a lot about how he wants to go back home as a champion and one thing that you talk about the boxing laboratory a lot of these Eastern European Soviet bloc fighters they, they leave everything to come over to Oxnard and to train in Igas Klimas gym with trainers like Buddy McGirt and it's got to be tough to put everything on the line leave your family go to a brand new country where you don't speak the language to pursue your career absolutely but it, it's a formula for success because the dedication and discipline that's required in order to, to make it in this very difficult business um, you know, the, the, these guys understand that, and they're willing to sacrifice those years of their of their lives with their family to uh, to, to make a good future for them. One minute to go here in round number two. You see, you see uh, Alim Kanuli still being cautious, using his jab, um, moving his head. I like I like his shoulder rhythm. That's when he keeps moving his shoulders left to right, which is why he hasn't really been hit yet. Um, and he's just keeping that right jab in the, in the face of, of uh, Ono Lunosi. And um, so far, total control from, from Janabek. What does Janabek do, not only in this fight, but other fights, to take advantage of that height difference that he has against most opponents? Well, he's actually really good at keeping that front foot right in range, but stepping out with his back foot, leaving that front foot there so he can step back and then step right back in and counter. Make you reach, use that length, extend yourself so then he can come back with the counters. See, oh no, Lenose really struggling with that distance, kind of just pawing at John Abek as that overhand left just misses from Alim Khanouli. And good straight left to finish off round number two. As John Abek, Alim Khanouli, maybe the hardest punch of the fight so far. Absolutely, that was a very short, straight left hand right on the chin of uh, Ono Lunose. Uh, he took it well, but he went back to the corner, definitely thinking about it. And we're going to see that, that straight left hand from, uh, from John Abek right at the end of the round here. Nice, hard, clean shot. And you can see that the, the power of that punch rung down into the into the heels of Ono Lunose. Mm. Right on the bottom of the chin for Janabek. Took it well, but he's definitely thinking about it. You see Buddy McGirt, the Hall of Fame trainer, in the corner for Aleem Hanouli. Buddy telling his fighter that Ono Lose doesn't want to fight, he just wants to survive. So we'll see if Alim Kanuli goes on the attack here in the third round and tries to put an end to this fight early. We definitely know that Janabek is capable. We saw that last fight against Stuart McClellan, who, frankly, Alim Kanuli outclassed in every aspect. But it's easy for the better of the two fighters, Chris, to sometimes take it easy if he knows he outclasses his opponent. That was not the case in Alim Kanuli's last fight. Yeah, and I think that's by design. Um, he often will outclass his opponents, but many times, will, more often than not, they go to the distance. Um, but I think that he understands that to be marketable and to be, to be a star, which is what he wants, he's got to pick up the pace, he's got to get stopped, and just got to put a hurt on these guys. Just three knockouts in his seven victories for Alim Kanuli, but he did get one in the fifth round of his last fight, which was in August against McClellan. No big name opponents yet for Alim Kanuli. He did fight Vaughn Alexander to a split decision victory back in November of last year. Which was a dangerous fight because, uh, um, you know, a, a name opponent, a guy who's, who had a, had a good record, and to take him on so early, um, that's, that's definitely a, a risk, but one that worked out well for in John Beck's favor. Left, left hook to the body from Alim Kanuli landed flush. It took a moment for Ono Lunose to recover from it. 
I think that's w what's really going to be the difference in this fight. If Janabek wants to push for the stoppage, then he's going to have to get to the body of Ona Lunase because he's keeping those hands very, very tight around the head. Is it difficult for the taller fighter to go down to the body consistently? It, the only thing that makes it difficult is, is that you have to get your hands lower and open the, in a, your chin, but there's not a lot of offense coming back from Ona Lunase. Plus, the range is so difficult that I think that Janabek will not have as much trouble getting to the body. Janabek has been in complete control so far as we wind down the third round. And you can start seeing Janabek as well getting a little pep in his step, bouncing around the ring a little bit more too as he works that body again. The left hook lands. I love when he does this, this inside now. Switching his shoulders, stepping in, stepping out. It, one thing you see when Onolunose has to really reach and try to get at Janabek, he really opens himself up. Yeah, he's got to swing wide, just like that. He's really having trouble with the distance and the range and the timing. Janabek, like you said, in complete control. And I, I expect him to just pick it up as the rounds go on. Ten rounds is a lot of rounds, so he's got a lot of time to set up, um, you know, set up, set up the finish. Janabek, the former Olympian for his native Kazakhstan, started boxing when he was 16 years old. In his U.S. debut in September of last year, he had two pro fights in Kazakhstan before moving to the U.S. Very sharp work this round from Janabek. Definitely finding, finding his flow at this point, in and out, seeing everything, even smiling at his opponent. I was going to say. Coming to the end of, end of round number three. Big smile on the face of Janibek Alim Kanuli, who is a very likable guy. A big smile and a big personality, which is difficult for fighters who don't speak English to come to the U.S. and kind of display that personality. But we are starting to see it as he gets more and more comfortable as a pro. In this round, talk about getting more comfortable. We see Janabek uh, land a beautiful left uppercut to the body there. But we're going to see the comfort of him moving his shoulders, countering it at, 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 at every turn, moving his shoulders, stepping in and out. Uh, great work, footwork, head movement, shoulder movement, um, combination punching. Uh, really, really impressed so far with what Janabek is doing. And I only expect him to really pick it up as the round goes on. So if Ono Lunose wants to get back in this fight, what does he need to do? Throw some punches first. That's the first thing. But he has to change. He has to. He has to change the distance. You got to get behind that jab. The shorter man has to try and out jab the taller man. Change the range. Get yourself inside. And then once you're inside, you've got you've got the, the real estate where you want to be. You got to let your hands go on the inside. And that has been the issue for Albert Onolunose. Has been his inability to get on the inside. Janabek's distance control has been impeccable so far through three rounds as we start the fourth for a scheduled 10 in this middleweight bout. There are two belts on the line, both held by Alim Khanouli currently, the WBC Continental Americas title and the WBO Global title. As he is ranked number 13 by the WBO, number 16 by the WBC. That's up from 15 and 30 respectively before his last fight. And Ono Lunose is looking very stiff, heavy-footed, really covering up and, and, and using a lot of energy to defend himself. Um, he doesn't look relaxed at all. So I, I would expect Jenna Beck to, to take advantage of that by going to the body. When you got a guy who's expending that much energy and, and so tense, you've got to hit him to the body. Um, that, that'll pay huge dividends. And that's what was really echoed by John Beck's trainer, Buddy McGirt, before that third round where he said, Ono oh, Lunose is just trying to survive. Yes, yeah, it does look like that. He's not really letting his hands go. He's not moving his feet. Good overhand left there from Janabek. Now, if you're his trainer, if you're Buddy McGirt, would you want to see something following that up? Um, you know, he's got rounds. It's only round number four. You know, he's, he's putting the pressure on the guy, and now he's starting to get to him more and more. So um, maybe not opening up just yet because Ono Nolose is only looking for the one punch. Mm -hmm. So keep picking, keep prodding, and then when the time comes, really let those hands go. He is really, John Beck is really picking apart Ono Lunose. Another straight left splits the guard for Alim Kanuli and scores again. And he is doing whatever he wants here in this fourth round. Yeah, I really like what he's doing right now. He's picking his spots. He's not taking any risk, no chance. Hit, don't be hit. And, uh, and he's got rounds. You know, he's getting his rounds in. He landed another powerful counter left to the body of Ana Lunose. 
I like how he just keeps moving his head too, Janovic. He's not getting comfortable or too comfortable in the fact that he's got to still be defensive-minded, he's got to be on his P's and Q's, and he's staying sharp throughout. Overhand left comes in just over 40 seconds to go here in the fourth round. Good head movement, upper body movement by John Beck. Yeah. Utilizing up the jab. Utilizing a very difficult style to deal with. Six punch combination rattles off. Fast hands too. Beautiful, beautiful work. Liam Carnuli putting on the pressure here in the final seconds of round number four. Ona Renose has shown no signs of being able to counter what Alim Hanuli is throwing at him. And we've seen this now, Chris, a couple times in fights here tonight, and that is the lesser of the two opponents has not given any indication of their ability to win the fight, and the question then becomes, how long does the referee and the corner of Albert Porto Lunose allow this fight to go? And right on cue, you see the referee going and asking the corner of uh, Ono Lunose, you know, what's up? You guys got to show me something. Because um, just like you said, I mean, this has been a completely dominant performance, and I don't see a way that Ono Lunose can, can, can get the win here. Especially in this last round, Janovic really opened his hands up, started to let combinations go. He's mostly pot shotting at first, using his jab, then just counter one single body, sh uh, body shot here and there. But the last round, he actually let his hands go, showed some fancy footwork, some fast hands, threw about six punches in, in about a second. Yeah. So, uh, Showing, showing different different folds to the game is Janabek. Well, one thing that's been impressive here in this fight, Chris, has been Janabek's ability to whatever technique Ono Lenose uses on the defensive end, it seems like Alim Kanuli has the answer. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I like that. And that's something that I said, you know, at the top of the show about Janabek. I really like how he's progressing as a fighter. Each each time out, I see something new. Great to see in a, in a young, up-and-coming guy like that. Still learning, still picking up new tricks, figuring out the pro game. Any other new things you see from Janabek in this fight? Well, uh, I, I see him setting down more. I, uh, I, he's right in front of his man, even though he's the taller guy. I, I've, I've seen him use a lot more footwork in the past, a lot, of, a lot more lateral movement, which is good that he has that in there. Um, but, but in this fight specifically, he's been very much on his front foot, looking to throw hard shots. See the sharp eye of referee Eddie Hernandez Sr. peering at Ono Lunose. And you have to imagine that Ono Lunose is going to need to show Hernandez something if he wants to continue through what is a scheduled another five and a half, four and a half rounds of this fight. Yeah, once again, we saw Ono Lunose going for a shot and missing widely and then getting hit with two, three shots in return. Well, and those body shots from Aleem Kamui just wear guys oh, down. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they add up. They add up. Everybody shot counts. Three punches in a row from John Abeck as he marches forward under the midway point here in the fifth round. We're leading up to our main events of the evening. Got a great heavyweight bout. Number one IBF contender, Kubrat Pulev, going up against Rydell Booker. And then our main event will be Lamont Roach Jr. taking on the defending WBO Junior Lightweight Champ and former Marine Jamel Herring here on Veterans Day weekend. Herring's first defense of that title that he won in Florida on Memorial Day weekend. Roach is the mandatory opponent for Herring, and what an opportunity for Herring here in Fresno, a large military community here, coming out to support. And great job by Top Rank as well, offering up to four free tickets for active duty and veteran military members to come out and support Herring tonight here in Fresno. And a great opportunity and way to give back to the community as well, as Herring was at a veteran's hospital earlier this week continuing to inspire those around him. It's a really incredible story. It's important to make your rounds as a champion. That's that's a lot of what we what we do this for. Aleem Kanuli landed a swift left hand as we're under 10 seconds here in the fifth round. California, do not forget, up next, Stockton, California's very own, Gabe Torres Jr. That's all I'm getting.
Not too much pressure in the corner of Janabek Alim Kanuli. It's 7-0 with three knockouts, getting a couple pointers from his Hall of Fame trainer, Buddy McGurk. Congratulate Buddy on his induction into the Boxing Hall of Fame this year, the former IBF junior welterweight champion, as well as the WBC welterweight champion, one of the best trainers in the business. He's got a stud here in Janabek Alim Kanuli. You can say that again. And uh, last round, Another dominant round from Janabek, um, showing some different things. A little bit of too much posing in front of Ono Lunose in that round. I, I, I think Janabek could have been a little busier. I don't want him to, to fall asleep on of sitting on his lead. I'd like to see him really put some pressure, and I'm sure that um, Betty McGirt told him that as well. You know, they've got to put that foot on the gas pedal and, and, and look to, to put some hurt. And peering down at your scorecard, Chris, you have Janabek winning every round. Yes, absolutely. He's completely dominant. There's, there's been no question in, in any single round. Um, you know, Ono Lodose has been really handcuffed just trying to defend himself. And you see right there, anytime Ono Lodose goes inside, the power left hand, that sweeping hook of John Beck Alim Kanuli has landed at will. Straight left hand again from John Beck. Kanuli has thrown consistently round through round, not taking a round off at all. Continuing to work on that technique, the combination punches inside, outside, distance control, everything has worked for Alim Kanuli here in this fight. It's hard to start counting all these combinations he's throwing. Good, hard left uppercut there from Janabek. Landed pretty flush. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the last round we see Ono Lunose. I'm seeing some blood. I don't know if Janabek has a little cut on the side of his eyebrow or if that's actually blood from Ono Lunose. Ooh, good body shot. Dug that one deep. And a smile from Alim Hanuli. And that is a cut on the left eyebrow of Janabek. Doesn't look like it's too serious at the moment. I think Ono Lunose is hurt to the body yeah, here. He's, he's taking some hard shots. Starting to actually show, yeah. show the punch. It was, it was that body shot earlier. Hernandez, referee, thinking about stepping in, look, taking a long look at Ono Lunose, who has not thrown a punch in quite some time. Yeah, and now he takes a knee. Never quite recovered from that body shot. No, no, and you see Ono Lunose looking to his corner. That's never a good sign. I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he stays down there. Yeah, he's looking to his corner, looking for help. You know, why let him continue to go at this point? No reason for him to continue. Yeah, it's not going to be much longer at all. Hernandez is at the ready to stop this fight. And Ono Lenose is done. That's enough. Caught in the corner. And Janabek Alim Hanuli, despite that late cut over the left eye, a dominating performance for his eighth victory in as many attempts. Thoroughly dominating performance for Ali Kanuli. Yeah, we're gonna say I think this is this is toward the end. I think uh, that Ono Lunose was already hurt to the body at this point. Really, just looking to try to make some distance, get away, get a little bit of breath. But uh, Janabek smelled the blood in the water, came forward, just let his hands go, and and, did, and I would see that when Ono Lunose took that took that knee. When we get up, you see something called forcing the stoppage. Janabek wasn't looking for one big shot. He just kept letting his hands go until the referee stepped in. He had seen enough. Good stoppage. Referee Eddie Hernandez Sr. stops it in the sixth round as Alim Kanuli gets his fourth knockout, second in a row. His eighth victory of his professional career. Ono Lenose falls to 24, three and one. Lupe Contreras will make it official here in Fresno. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eddie Hernandez Sr. steps in and calls a halt to the action with an official time of two minutes, 31 seconds of round number six, declaring the winner by way of knockout. Still, WBC Continental Americas and WBO Global Middleweight Champion, 
Kazakh style, Johnny Beck, Alim Khanoli. Alim Khanouli defends his two belts, the WBC Continental Americas title and the WBO Global title, and moves to 8-0 with his fourth knockout of his career. The TKO stoppage of Albert Onolunose as Alim Khanouli continues to rise in the ranks and move towards a title opportunity, a very impressive fight here in Fresno for the Kazakhstan crusher, Alim Khanouli, aside his trainer, Buddy McGurk and manager Igis Klimas.